mes amis, c'est Darren Chris et euh, vous regardez T-Mix. Yeah, you heard what the lady said. Give me some alcohol. Um, okay, great. <laughs> right. Did you guys have sex? Thank you. Back streets, back. All right. Um, I wouldn't call it pressure. I mean, you feel the same pressure you feel in any job. You want to do a good job and you want to do the best work you can do. So the only pressure I really felt was trying to make a good impression upon not necessarily the audience, but upon my colleagues, which were four actors that uh, kind of a household name for me. Um, Kristen Wiig obviously being um, one of the biggest names in comedy right now and uh, one of the best and greatest comedians, I guess you could say, um, out there, for, in, especially in the United States. And Annette Benning goes without introduction, as well as Matt Dillon, and then a wonderful Broadway actor by the name of Christopher Fitzgerald. These are all people that I was a huge fan of, so I really wanted to make sure they didn't think I was too big of an idiot. That was my main goal. Ew, hello, hi, who are you? Um, I'm, I'm Lee. Is no, because uh, Blaine is a lot harder to play than anybody else because he's so vastly different from who I am. Um, so um, I don't know what's harder actually. Sometimes it's harder to be yourself than it is somebody else. So I wouldn't say it was hard. It was uh, more of a relief, I should say. It was um, nice to change gears. Lee is very much just shades of myself. People who know me will know that I didn't uh, I think for the purpose of this first feature film for me, I didn't want to go too heavily into character mode. You know, this isn't Shakespeare, Chekhov, or Moliere. This is, I, I just want it to be as natural as possible. And people who know me will see a lot of Darren in Lee. So I tried to make it as naturalistic as possible. And actually, you don't have to tame your hair. Yeah, I don't have to do anything to my hair or really anything at all. I just show up and say what's on the page and that's it. So. Yeah, it was, it was a nice change of gears. I like to shake things up. I imagine the next role, whatever I have, I'll probably make more of a character, if I can, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm gonna have a Long Island iced tea, too, a large. Oh. I mean, I've been so busy. I'm currently on tour, and uh, that was my main project for the summer, and that keeps me quite busy, so unfortunately not. I'd hope so, um, but Gleek keeps me very busy. It's a miracle that I even got to do this film at all. When I'm playing music, I tell people I'm an actor, and when I'm acting in something, I tell people that I'm a musician, just for the sheer purpose of making sure nobody can pin me as one or the other. I believe that they are, although they do different things, they use the same functions and they use the same wiring. So um, uh, I don't know, I'll never be able to answer that question. I'm definitely both, and I will always try to make people not be able to you know, uh, take me as one or the other. I, I, I always want to be doing the other thing, so. <laughs> Am I the only one? Yeah. That's a very difficult question to answer because one, I don't know when I'll have the time to finish one. And second of all, I'm always writing, so the material keeps changing. So I don't know what it's gonna sound like. Uh, the main project of writing, making an album will not be to create new music, but to curate what the best collection will be, much like any art museum. You know, if you have a lot of art, how do you make it cohesive and how do you make it make the most sense? So at this point, I don't know. Um, there's a few new songs that I took on tour because I wanted to see how people responded to them and based on the reaction, I might put them on the album. But I don't know, I, I, have no, I don't have a release date or any idea what it's gonna sound like. I just hope that it's soonish. I hope it's soon and I hope that it's gonna be it's gonna sound like fun, but that's my hope. That's not what's gonna happen, who knows? It could be terrible, and it could be years from now. Oh yeah, of course, of course. Um, I've always been a pop music fan, so I was never that kid that secretly liked the Backstreet Boys or felt like I had to defend myself. Um, I was always very, loud and open about the music that I liked because I liked everything. I had my Backstreet Boys 
an NSYNC album's right next to my Nirvana and Soundgarden. I didn't find that weird. I kind of liked it if people thought that was strange. Um, later in life, that would be called eclectic, and I guess it's more celebrated than it was when you were a kid, so I'm glad I stuck to my guns. But yeah, I always loved the Backstreet Boys. That first album, man, was great. What do you think, actually, of the, the return of the boys band phenomenon? It's not a return. The boy band phenomenon will always be around because there will always, always, always be teenage girls. It's just how it works. Ten years from now, there will be a new... Well, you know, it's, I mean, there was the Beatles and the Beach Boys, and then you have every generation they just take on different forms whether it be all of a sudden there's Bee Gees then all of a sudden there is Duran Duran then all of a sudden there's New Kids on the Block and then then there's the Backstreet Boys then NSYNC and then Jonas Brothers and there's always in one direction there's always going to be the new group and all of us would you know one day I hope it's a long day long time from now but I love kids or grandkids that will listen to something that you know they will have never experienced before and I'll go well it's just like One Direction no it's not One Direction's old but that's how it'll happen, you know, it's just the cycle of, of, of music and of pop culture because for teenagers that's the first time they experience that kind of frenzy. So there's always going to be no lack of teenagers to, to bring the boy band or girl band thing back to the world. Am I original? Yeah. Am I the yes, sure. Um, yesterday I sang, uh, I did a concert yesterday at Nouveau Casino at Paris. Et euh, chante euh, aux champs Élysées, je me baladais sur l'avenue. Oh. Au soleil, je le plie, au midi, au mimi. Il a tout ce que vous voulez. Vous voulez aux champs Élysées. Je descends, et then uh, mostly jazz, Parisian jazz, Django Reinhardt, and all the standards, Edith, and uh, who else? There's a lot of great French music that I love. A lot of great Parisian bands. We're now big world bands, you know, Phoenix and Daft Punk are obviously massive world bands, but once upon a time they were just Parisian bands. Um, but yeah, a lot of French music, a lot of my favorite uh, music. It's funny when people study in the United States, they'll have like French cafe music, which is basically just, you know, Parisian jazz. So yeah, I love, I love, it's one of my favorite, it's one of my favorite languages to sing in, that's for sure. It's the other way around. With my Glee career, will there be any time for music or movies? And I don't know. I mean, uh, Ryan Murphy, our, our sort of boss, baroness, creator, um, has been very, very kind, as has our other um, writers and producers and exec producers have been very kind and flexible for me to do um, things that I've been able to do. So I hope they, <laughs> uh, I hope I, I can continue to be in their good graces because um, I, I love doing things on the side, but Glee takes an awful lot of time. Um, it, it's, it's many months out of the year, the majority of the months out of the year, the majority of hours of the day, and the, major, the majority of the days out of the week. So it's very hard to fit in any other things. I was shooting Imogene every other day in New York between LA. I would shoot a day in New York and I'd fly to Los Angeles, shoot a day, and then fly back. So it's a miracle that I pulled that off. Um, I don't know. I, if anything's going to keep me from doing more music or more, more films, I, I'm okay with it being Glee. You know, at least it's not because I can't get work. I'm, I'm happy if Glee's keeping me busy. I have no I, I don't know anything. They don't tell me anything. The press knows more than I do usually. Um, I assume that it'll begin where we left off, which was at the end of uh, uh, Blaine's senior year and all the other kids' senior year. So for all I know, season five might just be still senior year. I, I don't know how long they plan on keeping us there, but um, I don't know. I assume there'll be music. I assume there'll be dancing. I assume there'll be drama. What about Kay? Uh, who knows? I, I don't know. I, I think it ended with him with a ring of some kind, but I don't know if that actually is going to come to any kind of fruition. I don't know, I don't write the show. <laughs> I just show up and do what I'm told. Merci pour tout, mes amis. Uh, je suis désolé, c'est... Mon français n'en est parfait. But, um, one day, it'll be better. <laughs> I need to practice, but merci beaucoup. That's all, that's all I can say. It sounds like a cliche, but what else do you need to say, really? Thank you for being supportive, I guess. Ow! Oh, God! Jesus. Someone's oh, in God. here! 
sorry. What are you doing in my room? Actually, this is my room. Vous, vous regardez... You're watching yeah, I don't know, but no, what was the TV? Uh, T-Mix. 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 Vous regardez T-Mix. Vous regardez T-Mix. C'est Darren, je m'appelle Darren, c'est non important. C'est Darren. C'est Darren Chris. Uh, salut, uh, c'est Darren, Darren Chris. No, I'm kidding. Uh, salut mes amis, c'est Darren Chris et vous regardez TV Mix. TV Mix? Did I get the right? T Mix, damn it. Okay, cool. Salut mes amis, c'est Darren Chris et vous regardez T Mix.